Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU sanctions against Russia would destroy Cyprus economy. EU demand for fish exceeds sustainable supply. And European Union vote on cattle EID tags. May see the end of passports. Private copying levies in our legislation department. Plus, EU to require that electric vehicles and hybrids make noise to alert pedestrians. It's Thursday, 24th of April. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. EU sanctions against Russia would destroy Cyprus' economy. If the European Union were to implement economic sanctions against Russia, then it could very well destroy the economy of Cyprus, according to the Foreign Minister. There are very strong economic ties between Cyprus and Russia. If sanctions are really necessary, then every member state should decide for itself whether to take part. However the measures look, we must not harm ourselves. Now, several accounting and legal firms in Cyprus echoed the Foreign Minister's concerns. These businesses are worried that additional sanctions installed against Moscow would hurt their own economic growth. Cyprus remains to be one of the largest offshore investment regions for affluent Russians, despite the economic collapse it experienced last year, which forced the government to impose a 47.5% haircut on accounts holding €100,000 or more. And the Central Bank of Russia reported figures from the final three quarters of 2013 that highlighted that $12.9 billion was allocated from Cyprus. EU demand for fish exceeds sustainable supply. The European Union is the world's largest fish import market and, to a high degree, responsible for global overfishing. New regulations are aiming to change this, but it's not clear how they will be implemented. The average German eats over 15 kilograms of fish per year. And this adds up to four times the legal fishing quota in EU waters for Germany. Europe is entirely to blame for this situation, according to Nina Wolf from Ocean 2012, an alliance of organisations dedicated to transforming the European fisheries policy. Indeed, much of European fish stock is in a bad state due to decades of overfishing and it can't ensure optimal productivity, said Wolf. Now, of course, we've been talking about the unsustainable fish demand within the EU here at the unit for the last couple of years, and we have seen the EU using its financial muscle to leverage fishing grounds off West Africa, in the Seychelles and South America. What this article really highlights is the complete failure of the common fisheries policy, which has clearly destroyed the fishing industry and the fish stocks, the very things it was supposed to protect. European Union vote on cattle electronic ID tags may see the end of passports. Cattle EID rules, which could eventually lead to the phasing out of cattle passports, have been passed by MPs in Europe. Proposals to standardise bovine EID technology across the EU were finally voted in through the Parliament after months of political wrangling. The rules, which now have to be signed off by the Agriculture Commission before they are made an official regulation, will see technical standards harmonised and governments across Europe use a standard computer system to identify cattle. Now, last year I was chatting with an old Welsh farmer who explained about these electronic ID tags that they have been forced to use on their sheep. In a nutshell, they're very expensive less reliable than counting them, apparently, and the tags fall off, and even the ruggedized versions of the tag readers don't last five minutes in the Welsh mountain farming environments. So why is it that the state continues its plethora of regulation, legislation, and shows no confidence or trust in the farmers whose families have done this work for generations? 
We believe that it is highly likely that in due course the common agricultural policy will be held responsible for a European agriculture that can no longer be sustained, not in a dissimilar way to the previous story about the fishing industry. Private copying levies. Here's a heads up from our research team. This report has called for the EU to present a legislative proposal to review Directive 2001-29 EC. The system of private copying for private use is recognised as a good system which balances the copying for private use with the right to fair remuneration for the holders of copyrights, especially in cases where copyright holders are not in a position to licence directly the copyrights of reproduction on multiple devices. The report also considers that the long-term appropriateness of private copying for private use is regularly reviewed due to the natural digital and market progressions and developments as well as consumer behaviour. Now, if possible, exploring potential alternatives that would fulfil the objectives of striking a balance between the exceptions for copying by consumers and the compensation for creators would be recommended. Now, of course, we'll keep you in the picture once this legislative proposal starts coming through the pipeline. Now, additionally, we've introduced a new news feed service to our legislation and in the pipeline sections. These use the RSS, really simple syndication mechanism, and you can subscribe to these using your favourite RSS newsreader on your PC or mobile device. What this means is that you'll get all the latest news about what the EU is up to delivered directly to you as soon as it is ready. So look out for the RSS icon on our pages. EU to require that electric vehicles and hybrids make noise to alert pedestrians. The EU has been talking for years about requiring pedestrian alert noises on electric cars and hybrids and some vehicles already do. In the future, however, those warning systems will be mandatory. The European Parliament has backed a proposal that would require sound-making hardware in new electric vehicles by July 2019. The European Commission would lock down the final rules by July 2017. Whether or not you're a fan of the potential regulation, gas-powered vehicles aren't being let off the hook either. Parliament also wants to start lowering conventional engine noise levels as soon as July 2016, so every Europe-friendly automaker will have to be mindful of audio before too long. Broom, 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 broom. Our live interactive show Table Talk will be back on Thursday, May the 1st. We have confirmed guests, Trevor Coleman MEP, Renzo Zambrano from Venezuela, and of course the team here at The Unit. For this next show, we will have a dedicated phone number that you can call or SMS text with your questions or points of view for the panel, and Sue Doidge will be on hand to take your calls and messages. Now, to join the show as a panellist, you will need a web camera, microphone and a Google account. Now, we have added a new help section to our website in the resources section and full details of how you can join us as a panellist on the show can be found there. And I have included a link to the page in the show notes below. Remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.